Assalamualaikum. Hello, children. So, you know, um, some questions about the very, very big things that we experience or we see around us um, or some things that we don't see but we know that they exist, uh, they are so big, so old that it is very hard to wrap our, um, our minds around them. Hmm? But if we look at these uh, big, hard to imagine objects and events and compare them uh, to things we can see and feel and touch, then it becomes um, more, uh, what shall I say, more, it scales down uh, to um, more to our understanding and uh, we, we understand them better. Let's see. So this book is called If. It's written by David Smith and it's simply called If, right? Um, there, there, there's a, there is a byline to it. Um, uh, sorry, not byline, but uh, the subheading, uh, which is a mind-blowing new way of looking at big ideas and numbers. All right, so let me um, show you this picture, for example. Let's begin with the planets. You see that? See this? Hmm? You see that? Okay. So these are, uh, of course, balls that uh, you are familiar with, different kinds. And you can see that there is mercury, which is the tiniest, hmm? uh, about the size of a ping pong ball. You know, the one that you play table tennis with, a ping pong ball. So that is the size of, let's say, mercury. Um, so the size of uh, Jupiter, it is the largest. Have you seen those exercise balls that uh, sometimes people use? They are huge. They are big balls. So um, that is what Jupiter is in comparison to Mercury. And Saturn is like, a, you know, the multicolored beach ball that you might be taking to the beach sometimes. And then um, Uranus is um, a basketball. Okay. Uh, and what's a football? A football, we can say is, um, I mean, and we can say that Neptune is the size of a football. And I will show you what Mars and the Earth and Venus look like in comparison. So we are looking at sizes, right? So that is Mercury. And you can see what Venus is like, like a cricket ball. And then this is the Earth. And that's the exercise ball, big one that I was talking about. And that's the beach ball. And you can see the planets, the names written under them. So there. Now, you can understand the relation between, um, you know, all these planets. Um, so if you lay the solar system in, let's say, a 100-yard uh, football field, and the sun was the size of a grapefruit. So Mercury would be the four yard line, Venus um, on the seventh, Earth on the 10th, and Mars on the 15th, which would be about the size of a grain of salt. Hmm. Jupiter would be a large P just beyond the, uh, you know, my uh, midfield line. And Saturn, a smaller P on the opposite goal line. Uranus and Neptune, each the size of a sesame seed, 
would be out of sight far beyond the goal line okay so i think uh, now this way we can at least uh, conceptualize what these great planets in the solar system what is their relation um, amongst them hmm? all right so uh now we come to let's see uh what do we come to we come to the history of earth if the 4.5 billion year history of earth were compressed into a single year okay from january to december in a single year so i want to show you uh when different things appeared if we imagine that instead of 4.5 billion years uh, the earth is as old as one year then in that time frame what appears first see that hmm. and i hope you can see what i am trying to show you and you can also read the name of the month when they appeared see that okay all right so now let's read on january 1 let's say earth forms around the middle of february the moon appears in the third week of february the oceans and atmosphere appear as does the land mass that will eventually break up and become the continents okay are you with me by the third week of march the first life form appear forms appear in the sea in april more complex life forms appear in the sea because life began in water toward the middle of june oxygen is released into the atmosphere from algae and other microscopic life in the sea paving the way for living things that breathe oxygen in late june the first great ice age occurs in early november another great ice age occurs and more complex life forms such as small fish arrive from the end of november to the middle of december many new kinds of life evolve and the first animals appear on land around december 18 the first birds emerge close to december 22nd mammals evolve near the last day of december humans appear so you see where humans are in relation with the age of the earth the age of the earth is 4.5 billion years and if we compress it into one year from january to december we only appear on the last day of december all right okay um so if let's say we reduce this to one hour life on earth hmm? life on earth has appeared since 3.5 billion years and if we re reduce this to 1 hour let's see where we are the first life forms one celled organisms such as bacteria appear in the first second of the hour in the first second of the hour they appear fish show up at 51 minutes and 10 seconds and amphibians appear at 54 minutes 10 seconds you know that one hour is made up of 60 minutes right so fish appear at 51 minutes and 10 seconds and amphibians appear at 54 minutes 10 seconds the dinosaurs arrive 
at 56 minutes and are gone three minutes later. Just that. Mammals appear at 56 minutes 25 seconds. The earliest birds appear at 58 seconds. Uh, sorry, minutes. Just, just two minutes before the hour, right? Our earliest human ancestors finally make an appearance at 59 minutes 56 seconds. Okay. Modern humans, the humans we are related to, show up at 59 minutes 59.8 seconds. Get some idea? Okay, when humans appear, if if let's say life on earth were, we, we, we were to bring it down to one hour, 60 minutes, then, um, well, I'm grateful that uh, we didn't appear at 56 minutes, not with the dinosaurs, I wouldn't have liked to live with the dinosaurs, would you? So, you know, it, it's, um, it's an interesting book and uh, there is uh, obviously much more. Um, <clears throat> perhaps I should uh, read uh, one uh, final thing from here and maybe another time I can, uh, you know, refer this book again. But um, inventions through time, okay? If all the inventions and discoveries humans have made were laid out along a measuring tape, you know, a measuring tape, let's say 36 inches long, then at one end is the first human discovery, which is fire. Yes, people first used fire about 790,000 years ago, obviously to keep themselves warm and to cook their food. Yes. Okay. So, um, in the, um, uh, well, about halfway along, humans first built shelters. So about, um, let's say, the measuring tape, um, when you reach 18, okay, 18 inches, then that is when they, the humans, started to build homes for themselves, shelters. Uh, in the last one-tenth of an inch come all the inventions of the past 2,000 years, everything from the number zero to paper and plastics, telephones and cars, computers and satellites, everything appears in the last one-tenth of an inch. Okay, but before that, the bow and arrow is first used at, you know when? A little um, after 33 inches. And the pottery gets invented a little after 35 inches. The wheel is invented just before 36 inches. And the wheel really changed a lot, right? In how humans live. So, if you can make a list of um, from a little tiny wheel to the big wheels, um, I think it will be a very interesting exercise for you to see how wheels, you know, what part they play in our lives. So, here is that measuring tape, as you can see. Yes. See that and a bunch of you know all those inventions that um, you and I know about so um, this is the book called if and um, if you make that list about the wheels then let me know all right okay take care of yourself Khudafiz.